channel. Uh, we are currently cycling from London Victoria to London Euston to jump on to the Caledonian Sleeper and get the overnight train to Inverness. It is the day before, no it's not, it is two days before Scott Juro, it's Thursday evening. Scott Juro is a Saturday morning. On Saturday morning, words struggling. I wanted to do a pre ride video. So, this is the start of that. So, stay tuned for uh, a bit more information on what Scott Juro is, what my plan is, what I'm expecting. Maybe a little mooch around in Maness. Maybe a little bike check, kit check. Either way, it's going to be good fun. Stay tuned. That is us now right, on the sleeper train and we get a bit of kip and I'll see you in Inverness. We have arrived in Inverness. It is 8.30 in the morning. I really need a cup of tea, so it's time to find some breakfast. So I just messaged the Airbnb host and I'm able to drop the bike off a good five hours before check-in, which is fantastic. So we're just heading there now, walking over the bridge. It's a beautiful morning, it's cloudy, but it's warm by Scotland standards, at least. Uh, no, that's unfair. It's about 15 degrees, that's fine. Had breakfast, had a cup of tea, which is much needed, black pudding, Always got to have some black pudding when you're up there. So I'm going to drop off the bike and then I'm going to have a wander around town for most of the day, really. Might go out for a ride later. Spin the legs a bit. We'll see. See how the day goes. This is not in it. Hey, that is the bike dropped off. And now we have a morning of mooching around Inverness. Being a bit of a tourist. Doing some souvenir shopping. I'm thinking anything I buy, I'll then just post back so I don't need to restrict myself to buying tiny, small, light things. I can buy big, heavy things if I want. So yeah, let's have a mooch back into town and I should be able to check in from about 11. Uh, so Airbnb host, Karen, uh, very graciously letting me drop the bike off before the previous guests have checked out. He said they'll be ready about 11, so I can go back any time from then, really. Which looks great. To Inverness, city centre. spot a lunch thought I'd go out to the castle to eat it but I hadn't realized that the castle is closed there's um, just construction all around it I don't know if you can get a better view from down that way but I'm gonna walk down that way anyway just because why not might as well my plan is I'm gonna go back to the Airbnb and I think I might go out for a little spin on the bike so hopefully next time you see me, I'll be on the road pedaling. See you soon. Hello. I have decided to do a couple of hours just to get the wheels spinning, get my legs spinning, shake them up a bit. 
doing a road ride on the gravel ride. Just turned off the, the main road onto this little narrow road, which is beautiful. Tree lined. Fields the other side of the trees. Just slowly spinning the legs. Getting them just a bit woken up before tomorrow's madness begins. baby so this is not Loch Ness this is Loch uh, Drumlachan something like that I'll put it up on the screen uh, this is just a little tiny one uh, we'll see Loch Ness in a bit as we come back round but I thought this was a damn near perfect spot to stop and talk to you a bit more about Scott Juro and what it is so I'm going to find a comfy rock and I'll see you on that. Okay, I'm on my rock. Frustratingly, I don't have signal, so I can't look at the specific stats for the ride. So I'll do that back at the Airbnb. But what I can tell you is that the Badger Divide is a gravel cycle route from Inverness to Glasgow. Total 208 miles, which is what, 300 and... 30 kilometers, is that right? Something around about that. It has, I think, 15,000 feet of elevation. I will double check that. So Scott Juro uh, rides the Badger Divide over two days, which means that I'm gonna need to be averaging 104 miles per day. Now, the longest I've ever been on the gravel bike is 40 miles, so, that is a daunting prospect. I haven't camped out. I haven't done a ride with a loaded bike since my Wales trip last year, when I rode on Nashkomru. And that I was averaging about between 75 and 80 miles per day on road, which is a lot easier. On gravel, you're going maybe two thirds the speed as you would on road to put a bit of perspective in it. So if I were to average 15 miles an hour on the road, I would hope to be able to achieve about 10 miles an hour average on gravel, but you're probably putting in a bit more effort um, for that as well. So there's, uh, it's more than just the average speed. The way that Scott Jero works is, it's not a race, it's essentially a reliability trial organized by a group called the Racing Collective which does kind of imply that it is a race. So there are racing elements to it, but rather than the first one to reach Drygate Brewery in Glasgow is the winner, there are five timed Strava segments along the route, each of which is designed to test a different skill, whether it be descending, climbing, bike handling, endurance, whatever it is. And I'll run through the, uh, the segments in more detail uh, back at the Airbnb. So the idea is that you are timed on each of these segments and the person who does the fastest total time for all five segments is essentially the winner. But there's no prizes. The times do get posted online. So those that are of a competitive nature and are going for the win can do that. Honestly, as much as I would love to be competitive, and I'll, I'll be competitive against myself, I will, I will try on these segments, but I'm under no illusion that I have got absolutely no chance of being like top half finishers. So if I can get top half on one of the segments, that would be cool. That basically means that you can give it the absolute beans on each of those five segments and then just dawdle the rest of the way. As long as you get to Glasgow by 8 p.m., you could be the last one into Glasgow, but still win by having the fastest segment times, if that makes any sense. 
So that's the idea behind the ride. Fully self-supported, you are not allowed to get any, basically any support that isn't available to every other rider. So I couldn't ring up a friend to get them to drive and drop me off like a food pack, um, unless they are doing that for every other rider. And you have to make every other rider aware that they can do that. So fully self-supported, off-road gravel, it's gonna be a pretty much solo ride. Might be a couple of others at the very start. You can start at any point from 8 a.m. I'm gonna to aim to start as near to 8 a.m. as I can because I need all the time I can get to, get to get to Glasgow. My plan is to ride 10 hours moving time on the first day or 100 miles, whichever uh, comes sooner. So if I do 100 miles in nine and a half hours, I might consider stopping depending how, how the legs go or I might push on for another half hour so I have a little bit less to do the following day. I'm just really excited about it. It's going to be super, super tough. I'm under no illusion that this is going to be the toughest two days I've ever had on a bike. It could be the toughest single day. Fred Witten earlier this year was super tough. 100 and... what was it? 100 and, 13 miles but that's on road it's a lot more climbing the Fred Witten but road is a lot easier than gravel riding I find anyway there's gonna be moments where I want to pack it in I just need to really test my mental strength um, I hope I can do it I'm really confident that I can do it and I will not give up easily I will put in the excuses early that I am sick my wife got a very bad cold on Saturday last week it's now Friday so six days ago which developed into tonsillitis I woke up on Thursday morning and it was incredibly painful to swallow so it's a bit better now but man this ride it's not rockets understatement it's not shuttles um, absolute whoppers you didn't need to know that I don't know why I told you that so I'm gonna finish off this ride I've got maybe 20 miles left to go, 15, 20 miles. I've done the climb now, so it's just descending. I should have a bit of a tailwind back as well. So let's get back on the bike. Let's ride back to the Airbnb and I'll update you with more detail on the Badger Divide route and the segments that I'll be doing over the next two days. Not get better than cycling in Scotland. California, you were great, but this is something else. The largest inland lake in the UK and home of Nessie. So keep your eyes peeled. Hello, so it is 10 past 8 now after I got back from the ride and showered and went out for dinner, repacked the bike bags, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of run out of time, but let's uh, let's go through the stats of the Badger Divide route first. Uh, so, yep, it's 208 miles and it is 16,550 feet of elevation. Now, Kamut's elevation calculations, estimates, are always on the lower side. So, I imagine that's probably going to be pushing about 18,000, but we'll see at the end. So, obviously, you're watching this one, you must be interested in watching the actual ride video. So. Uh, that will follow soon. It's a good reminder to subscribe if you haven't already so you see that 
as soon as it comes in. Uh, that would be a cool thing to do. The other thing we wanted to look at was the Strava segments, wasn't it? So, let me just bring that up on my phone. XDS1, which is 4.59 miles, average grade of minus 3.8%, so I think that's gonna look a bit kind of technical. You've got XDS2, which I believe is Coriaric Pass, so 7.44 miles, average grade of 5.4%, that's one for the climbers. XDS3 is 21.45 miles, average grade of 0.4, so Maybe endurance is the focus for that one. XDS4 is 11.28 miles, average grade of minus 1.1%. Uh, technical downhill, maybe? And XDS5, 6.41 miles, average grade of 0.2%. That looks kind of twisty turny. Uh, maybe that's the focus of that one. There's also a bonus one, uh, which is being more mic. This doesn't count towards the timings but it is 6.56 uh, miles, average grade of minus half a percent. Um, there's an up, there's a down. That's not part of the timed ones, but we, we've got that on the, on the route anyway. I will do a full look at the bike and the kit and everything I'm taking with me, but this video is already long enough. It's starting to get dark. I need to get a good night's sleep. So I'm gonna wrap up the video here. The next video on the channel will be the ride, the Badger Divide, Scott Juro, the race, reliability trial, whatever you want to call it, the thing, the big one. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't already. It makes me very happy when people subscribe. Like the video, comment on the video. Uh, what other kind of content around this event would you like to see? I'm going to do a, a bike check, um, look through all the kit I've got. The advantage of doing that afterwards means I can also look at what I didn't need to take and what I wish I had taken as well. So that's gonna follow as well. That's it for this video. Uh, it's nearly here, the time has come. Time's running out. One more sleep and it's the biggest ride of my life. I'm excited, but I'm also bricking it. Well, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good time. Bye. Thank you.